Hi, I'm Alec Velshi with MSNBC. Last week, the nation celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day and reflected on the legacy of the civil rights icon and his contributions to freedom and equality in America. Let's talk about it with Jeffrey Rosen, president and CEO of the National Constitution Center. Jeff, tell us what Dr. King's constitutional legacy was and, and what we can learn about his views on the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution from some of his most significant speeches. Well, Ali, Dr. King has a towering constitutional legacy, and we explore it with a close reading of seven of his most inspiring speeches uh, in this week's episode of We the People. In his 1963 I Have a Dream speech, Dr. King challenged We the People to live up to the promises of freedom, equality, and justice in the Declaration of Independence. And on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, he said, when the Founding Fathers wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note that promised freedom and equality to all. What's so remarkable about Dr. King was that everything he achieved was through nonviolent resistance. And in his letter from the Birmingham jail, he explained how using civil disobedience to break unjust laws arouses the conscience of the community to injustice. There are two really powerful essays from 1958, which are worth reading. They're called An Experiment in Love and Pilgrimage to Nonviolence. And he reveals there that his philosophy is, is inspired by Jesus Christ, by Mahatma Gandhi, and by the ancient Greek ideal of agape, or universal love, which he took from Plato. He brought about tremendous changes in his lifetime. And even after the passage of the Civil Rights Acts of 64 and 65, he insisted that the work of equality was ongoing. And there are two really important speeches from 1967, where he shifts his focus from ending discrimination against black people as individuals to focusing on economic impediments to equality, such as the structures of capitalism that affected black people as a group. And those speeches are beyond Vietnam and where do we go from here? So that means today that both colorblind conservatives and anti-racist liberals can claim Dr. King as an inspiration. He was martyred in 1968, but his legacy lives on. There's so much more to say, but I urge everyone who's listening to check out this week's We the People podcast, where two great scholars of Dr. King, Hassan Kwame Jeffries and W.B. Allen, dive into these seven inspiring speeches. The episode is so moving and full of light. It's an example of civil dialogue at its best. Back to you, Ali. And that is what uh, we do at the National Constitution Center. Jeffrey, thank you for being with us. Jeffrey Rosen is the president and CEO of the National Constitution Center. Be sure to follow Jeff and the National Constitution Center on Twitter, at Rosen Jeffrey and at Constitution CTR.